Hi, I'm Dane, and I love fresh food. Unfortunately, we live in a desert. The solution to my problem? Hydroponics. Being a marine biologist and a filtration engineer, well, I've been developing a system for a number of years now that is both economical and easy to use. So what did I come up with? Plant tracks. Everything in this greenhouse is being grown in this system right here. This plant track system is versatile. It can go from horizontal to vertical or anywhere in between. It only uses one inch rock wool starter cubes, no net cups, wicking cords, or foam inserts to deal with. They're lightweight, you can remove them, clean them out, and they're completely customizable. If you happen to live in Western Colorado or you don't mind picking up the shipping charges, contact us for a customized system and we would love to talk to you about what we could do for your situation. This video is going to show you how to install our very first Plant Tracks kit called the Plant Tracks V4. It's going to be available online and what it includes is four vertical Plant Tracks towers, 40 inches long, five plant sites, and all the hardware and plumbing that you need to mount this to a vertical surface. Also available is the V4 expansion kit, which will add four plant tracks planters at a time to your base kit or another expansion kit. You can keep expanding until you run out of wall space, pump power, or appetite. And we're gonna get into that installation right now. Let's talk about the tools you're going to need to do this project. You're going to need a tape measure, pencil, marker, a level, preferably a two foot level, but a small one will work. I used an adjustable wrench, a drill. Uh, I used a 332nd pilot bit, Phillips bits two and three, flathead screwdriver, that's for the hose clamps. You may need a PVC uh, cutter or a saw if you need to alter your drain assembly. Uh, you also need a, a 7 16 socket wrench, that's for the lag screws, and of course, your safety glasses. As a reminder, installation is ultimately the responsibility of the buyer. If you have any doubts about your installation situation, contact a professional. These instructions or any related content will cover a basic installation on a vertical surface. Due diligence is needed on how to properly install to your surface. Alternate hardware may be necessary. If you're considering an indoor system, we highly recommend horizontal orientation over vertical. Lighting a horizontal system indoors is much easier and they are better for water containment. Step one, install your header. To begin your header install, you have to determine your header height. We recommend no higher than you can reach. Next, you're going to install your bleed valve and your barb fitting onto your header T. To determine which goes on which side, the barb fitting goes on the same side as the emitter holes, and that will be pointing down, and your bleeder valve is going to install upwards of that. To install it, simply screw them in to the fittings by hand, and if you have to go a little bit further, you can use your wrench. Your header can be installed in either direction, left or right. Where the T fitting is on your header is where your pump is going to attach. That will be one end of your system. If you intend to expand the system, then the expansion will be the other end, and that's the end you want to leave extra room. Next, we'll be installing our header brackets. These are two pieces of six inch unistrut, and we'll be using two lags each to install these. If you consult the diagram for clearances, you'll see that these brackets are made to be 16 inches apart from each other. This is to accommodate most stud spacing on most structures. After that, you'll see that there should be about 10 and 3 quarter inches of clearance to the T part of the header from the end bracket. And then from the other bracket, there should be about 8 and 3 quarter inches to the end of the header. But these are general and have a little bit of wiggle room. Mostly, you want to be concerned with not covering up the emitter holes on the header pipe with the pipe clamps. After you determine the placement of your unistrut brackets, you're going to place them up on your surface and you can mark the top and bottom ovals for your lag screw placement. 
The recommended pilot hole size for these quarter inch lags is 3 seconds inches. And you want to secure these struts to the walls using two lags and two fender washers each as shown. The header attaches to the struts using supplied pipe clamps. Clamps fit into the strut and once tightened will lock headers securely in place. Step two, plant tracks install. Your four plant tracks planters come with a hook and loop strap. Each one is made to loop around your header pipe. We recommend marking the outside of the proper position of the hook and loop hangers once your planters are centered right under the emitter holes. This way you can be confident that your emitters are directly centered under your planters. Step three, gutter. First thing you want to do is slide your two brackets on the gutter as shown. Next, you're going to install your gutter end caps. There's a left and right end cap, and when you're installing them in, be careful not to tear the foam. You may use a bead of non-toxic sealant for a little bit of extra security on your end caps. However, if you intend to expand in the future, you may not be able to reuse this end cap. Next, we'll be determining the gutter height. Put your gutter up underneath your plant tracks planters and leave about an inch and a half of space between the bottom of the planters to the bottom of the gutter. This will allow you to be able to easily remove your planters in the future. Once your gutter height is determined, place your brackets between your plant tracks planters and secure in place using the supplied Phillips head screws. Step four, sump placement. The Plant Tracks V4 does not come with a sump or a pump. We recommend using anything that will hold water and is non-toxic. Common items used for a sump are storage totes. If you use one of these, it is recommended that you double them up. This will keep light out and it will also keep the temperature more stable. If you can, bury your sump. This method will provide the best insulation. Any of our plant track systems can also be installed onto existing hydroponic or aquaponic systems. Step five, drain assembly. Your V4 comes with a one inch drain assembly that uses a bulkhead. To install the bulkhead, you're going to ensure that the gasket is on the inside of the gutter and that the bulkhead nut is on the bottom. Do not use any kind of thread sealant or tape on the outside threads of the bulkhead. This will not help seal water. Next, you're going to be taping your one inch drain as shown and screwing it in by hand to the bottom of the bulkhead. All of these fittings can be done hand tight. If your sump isn't directly beneath your planter, you may have to do a little bit of plumbing to get your drain to go to your sump. While these parts are not included, they are widely available at any local hardware store. Step six, pump installation and system test. Your V4 kit came with two pieces of 40 inch irrigation tubing. This tubing can be spliced together using a ball valve and two barb fittings, which are also included. This installation video doesn't show that ball valve because I'm using a controllable pump and don't need a valve. Place your pump in your sump and connect one end of the tubing to your pump and the other end to the header of your V4 system. Make sure your air bleed valve is closed and turn on your pump. Next, slowly open your air bleed valve until water comes out. Water should then be flowing to all four emitter sites on your plant tracks header. You can now close your air bleed valve, adjust your nutrients, and you're ready to start planting. 
The following sequence is going to show you how to install the V4 expansion. The V4 expansion installs very similarly to the base kit. It's a little bit easier since you already know where your header and your gutter are going to be. The one and a half inch threaded plug on the expansion end of your original kit can be removed and installed on the new piece of header. And then your new expansion header will screw into that original socket. You'll remove and reuse your original gutter cap and install it on your new expansion gutter. The V4 expansion comes with a gutter coupling piece that is meant to splice the two gutters together. In a matter of about 15 minutes, you can double the size of your vertical garden. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about plant tracks, hydroponics, or anything of that nature, just contact us at Fish Face Farm. We would love to hear from you.